the state we are in today financially is a um a very bad one uh these fiat currencies um this is what the hundred dollar looks like to me now just a mini me version of it um it's really bad right now and it's it's not fair what they're doing uh to the average to the average person the average american average everyday hard working person um you know what do they teach us what do they teach us in school about money not much but they tell us to um you know get a good job and uh, you know, save your money and invest well, and they'll say basic stuff, but they never tell you about what's going on with the money. They never tell you about the money printing or money was backed by gold and silver, and they took us off the gold standard in 1971, and the our money is not uh, backed by anything but the good faith of the military, basically, and, and you know, the faith that we have in it. Um, it's 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 crazy, you know. When we're taught about money we don't look for a better money we just look for ways to make money um we're not looking for a better version of money like this and like silver or gold you know we're looking for more fiat currency to buy the things that we need but little do people know that uh there's better versions of money out there and that's god's physical money in gold and silver and that's the people digital money in bitcoin um we're going to go through a video right now that's talking about what's going on today um, and how we can help, you know, get out of the system and, and everything else. And I'll be talking through it. So let's see what they got to say. The sudden crack in the system can lead to fear and fear leads to panic and panic leads to a bank run. And with everything online these days, those bank runs can happen at the speed of a Twitter post. Satoshi had just a beautiful vision, a beautiful dream, and that was what if we didn't have to trust the banks? And what if we didn't have to save our life savings in a fiat currency that's collapsing in value? Hard money. That's right. This is hard. Um, only 21 million Bitcoin that will ever be made. And... Uh, you can't print any more silver or gold or platinum. You just can't do it. And money's supposed to be hard to get. And this stuff right here, um, <laughs> it's just a Ponzi scheme, man, that we need to get out of. You know what I mean? I, I really, truly believe that uh, people need to, we need to open people's eyes and show them, you know, what the real money is. And this, I think this video will help. Well said, Mr. Ford. It is well enough that people of the nation do not know, do not understand our banking and monetary system. For if they did, I believe there would be a revolution before tomorrow morning. Um, that's our job, ladies and gentlemen, to let people know what's going on with the banking and the monetary system. You know, we're being cheated. If you if you save money in dollars and put it in the bank, um, you know the the high yield interest. Uh, four percent and stuff like that is getting killed. You know what I mean? It's our job to do that. It really is. It's, we we got to wake these people up and show them what the real money is, guys. What could be so pernicious about ordinary banking that Henry Ford believed the truth could spark a sudden revolution? A Beirut bank burns. <laughs> According to the Federal Reserve, 94% of American adults are banked in some form or another. But how many really understand how banking works? And what actually happens to your hard-earned money when you deposit it at a bank? The bank doesn't hold it. It lends it out or uses it to purchase things like government securities. That's right. The money goes in and it goes right out behind your back. Goes to loans to people for houses, cars, personal loans credit cards, high interest rate credit cards, bonds, uh, you know, mortgages and things like that. Do they ask your permission to do that, by the way? Do they give you at least half of what they make? But when you come and get try to get your money out, they want to ask you a bunch of questions. Whether it's a country, whether it's a company, the knock-on effects due to counterparty risk lead to leverage unwinds. You can set your watch by it. It's that simple. Professional risk managers like Greg Foss are keenly aware of something most ordinary people never stop to consider, counterparty risk. In other words, can you trust your counterparty in a financial transaction, in this case your bank, to not be in danger of defaulting on its obligation to you as the customer? Counterparty risk. Can we trust the banks? Um, I think the 
resounding answer is no. And by the way, guys, look up Greg Foss, F-O-S-S. -S. Um, that guy's the man. You know what I mean? And again, guys, it's not about silver against and gold and silver and precious metals against Bitcoin. We're all on the same team. We are fighting against the evil empire. And we know who the evil empire is. We're rebels, man. They, they call us the rebels because we want freedom and, and truth and justice and sovereignty. And, you know, we want a smaller government and we don't want to be told what to do and what to eat and what, you know, we don't want our currency de deba debased. And we, we want to be able to ask questions. We want the government to help us when we need to get help, but in a small way, not to control our lives. A lot of this is a confidence game. That's kind of the whole game of fractional reserve banking. These institutions are inherently unstable. I've described it as basically like we're all just casually storing our money in leveraged bond funds. If you phrase it like that, would you say, is that a low risk investment? People would say, no, of course not. But that's what we all just casually use for our savings. Fractional reserve banking refers to a system in which only a small portion of deposits are required to be on hand for withdrawals. But what's worse is it increases the supply of money in an economy because it means banks are effectively lending out the same dollar more than once, increasing the overall risk for depositors. The normalization of using these inherently unstable fractional reserve banks for ordinary savings is something most people take for granted. You got any money in the bank, you better hurry. People sign up for it because they don't know any better. They just think they put their money in the bank, their money in the bank, and then they think it's safe. They don't know anything about how what the banks do with it after they get it. They don't know about fractional reserve banking, which is another form of printing, by the way. Not only do they print it with the Fed, but they print it in the banks, too. Legally, by the way, legally, you know, you put a thousand bucks in, they can put nine hundred in. I think they can do a thousand now. I think do 100 percent. But people don't know, guys. That's why we got to wake them up. But a sudden crack in the system can lead to fear. And fear leads to panic, and panic leads to a bank run. And with everything online these days, those bank runs can happen at the speed of a Twitter post. We were told we would get in. We Stay open an extra hour! Bank runs have been around as long as fractional reserve banking. These are scenes from the Washington Mutual and IndyMac bank runs over a decade ago as covered by 60 Minutes. Scott Pelley interviewed then FDIC Chair Sheila Baer. When IndyMac failed, you were watching these scenes on television yes, of people I was. lining yes. up outside the bank like it was 1932. Yes, it was. It was what amazing. did you think of that? So I think people just forgot that banks do fail and how the FDIC works. The question becomes, how many times can the FDIC do that? At what point is the FDIC broke? The FDIC is backed by the full faith and credit of the United States government. So if we need to, we try not to and don't want to, but if we need to, we can borrow from Treasury to uh, make up for any shortfall. So the FDIC never goes broke? We don't go broke. No, we're, we are the government. We're backed by the full faith and credit of the United States government. Honestly, I, I don't want my loved ones to do any bank runs. I want them to go casually, take their money out and put it somewhere else into things like this. I sleep like a baby with my uh, my Bitcoin and my, and my precious metals. But when that lady uh, from the FDIC said they're backed by the full credit you know, of the government or whatever. And um, they're basically saying, you know, we can just print more and just keep keep kicking the can down the road because the government's not broke. We're 31 and a, and a half trillion, more than 31 and a half trillion in debt. But you're going to get more money from them. Where's that money come from? They never say that. We know where it comes from, guys. We already know. That is until people stop trusting the full faith and credit of a government that lives by the money printer. Bears guarantees may or may not be that reassuring, depending on how much faith one puts in the government to not create bubbles and moral hazards in the first place. After all, these statements were made before this latest banking crisis. And the big question is, how systemic will this one turn out to be? It's just one of the challenges of having an actively managed financial system and their ongoing cycle of putting out fires that they themselves caused. For example, after the dot-com bubble, that was a mild recession by most accounts. Unemployment rate and GDP contraction were pretty mild. And yet the Federal Reserve cut interest to 1%, which encouraged a lot of real estate leverage. And then they rapidly hiked interest rates. And that wasn't the only factor, but that was a contributing factor to the 2008 financial crisis. And we kind of saw a similar, but you know, somewhat less severe dynamic this time. It does feel a little bit like wash, rinse, repeat. You blow up one bubble, pop it, and then you have to taper it over and hit the money printer again, lower interest rates. We already went to zero. Where does it go from here? How many more times can they pivot again and lower interest rates before at some point we lose all credibility? 
predicting that is basically predicting human behavior, uh, which is challenging. We don't know when it's going to happen, when it's going to collapse, but we know what's going to happen. Again, they, they can't do anything but what? Turn on the money printers like they did with the, with the banking collapses. And, and, and by the way, guys, these, those three major banks, the first three, were all connected to uh, cryptocurrency. So they, they knocked two birds in one stone. The U.S. government does not want you to have Bitcoin, okay? They, don't, they do not want you to have that. They don't want you to have a digital dollar or digital version of a sovereign money on a, on, a, uh, on a cold storage. They want you to use, use the CBDC. So they knocked two birds in one stone. Not only did they bail the banks out and, and do that stuff, but they want all the little banks to collapse, uh, convert into the bigger banks. Everybody take their money out of the little banks, put them into the, to the big banks. And on top of that, to, for they can do the CBDCs, and then they want to shut down the cryptos, you know, the crypto exchanges to the banks. Because all these banks, those first three ones, like I said, they're connected to uh, cryptocurrency exchanges. So they want to make the on-ramp of, of Bitcoin and th stuff like that uh, very, very hard to do. You know, it's absolutely evil, guys. One universal aspect of human behavior that is all too predictable, unfortunately, is the tendency to make grievous mistakes, or worse, to be flat out corrupt at the expense of everyday working citizens. Loss of trust in the system is happening fast. It's happening in Lebanon, across the European Union, and in our own backyard. I've lived through five of these crises. Started with the LDC debt crisis in 1988, then long-term capital management, 1998, 2008, then the COVID crisis, and guess what? This one is the worst of all of them because all you've done is kick the can down the road or think of it as kicking it to the highest level, the government debt level. There's nowhere else to kick it, people. There's no higher level of leverage than the governments and the sovereigns. So Contagion was in 2008, 2009, Bear Stearns and Lehman. Replace that with country XYZ today. It's exactly the same problem. Exactly. Keep kicking the can, kicking the can, kicking the can. It's exactly the same problem. But the longer you kick it and the more you kick it and the farther you kick it, it's going to be worse. It's not going to just be banks this time, like he said. It's going to be countries. The problem that we have is a flawed banking system, a fractional reserve banking system where bankers can lend money that they don't have. And if you go back in time to the United States in the 1850s, that was a capital offense. You could hang for that. And so we've had another disaster. And none of this is actually going to save us from another disaster down the line. It's bound to happen because we haven't addressed the real problems. Absolutely, you can hang for that. When these bankers just give out money that they do not have in this fra fractional reserve banking system, you heard what Ron DeSantis said yesterday in, in that um, in that speech. He said, if we can just print money and print money, why are we working? Why are we doing this? We can just stay home. But they had indentured servants back then that literally you had to pay off your debts. And if you didn't, you can go to prison or you can hang. That's a real thing. Are we watching a systemic collapse of the central banking system here in the United States? I think we're seeing the onset of the next financial crisis. And there will always be a next financial crisis until the... The system collapses entirely. I think it's hard to predict or, you know, is this the last cycle? One thing is certain, the U.S. will have trouble retaining its position as the world's bank if people don't trust their money is safe in the system. We certainly can't be bailing out banks in 15-year cycles. I'm basically watching to see any more actions by the Federal Reserve, which is a sad state of affairs because when you look at the financial system, you shouldn't have to look at what one guy is going to decide when he gets out of bed or like, you know, one group of people. But that's kind of the nature of the system. It just consolidates towards the center over time because we're kind of in the later stage of that multi-decade cycle. It's now quite consolidated towards the center. And so watching what the center is going to do is, is essentially part of... of how you have to manage assets uh, in this type of environment. And, and it's even more multiplied because we're at the end of the of it. We're at the end of the cycle. 15 years, every 15 years, bailing out banks, doing this, crashing the system, all this other stuff. You know what I mean? And she said it right. When you have one person or a group of just a few idiots, uh, Jerome Powell, Janet Yellen and the like, um, and, 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 and guys like this, Brandon, the evil empire, it's crazy when they're talking, the whole market is moving based on two idiots. Janet Yellen and, and um, Jerome Powell said the exact opposite yesterday when they were speaking. 
You know what I mean? It, it is absolutely insane how these people are controlling everything. That's why they do not want us to have Bitcoin and physical cash outside the bank, and they don't want us to have our precious metals. How then do we extract ourselves from the centralized pitfalls of our modern economy, where a small group of people determine the price of money itself? Look, Satoshi had just a beautiful vision, a beautiful dream, and that was what if we didn't have to trust the banks? And what if we didn't have to save our life savings in a fiat currency that's collapsing in value? Satoshi Nakamoto inscribed the following headline on the Bitcoin Genesis block in 2009. Chancellor on the brink of second bailout for banks, which provides a clue to the problem he was trying to solve, having to rely on a trusted third party. And so he created a form of money that requires no trust, no need to worry about a third party's epic lapses in judgment, succumbing to corruption, or perpetuating a rigged system for personal gain at the expense of others' hard work, time, and energy. Bitcoin won't lend out, freeze, or censor your savings. It doesn't need a bailout. And it finally provides a fair and open financial system for securing property rights where anyone can opt in. It's very simple. Don't trust, verify. And short the banks, long Bitcoin. Damn right. Short the banks, long Bitcoin, long your physical assets, your physical money, your physical cash, and everything else that you need. Guys, this is what Bitcoin was made for, ladies and gentlemen. January 3rd, 2009, you saw what he put in the, in the blockchain about um, everything that's going on, man, back then. And it's, and it's happening now. As you can see, Bitcoin is just going up and up in value. Bitcoin worked this weekend when banks didn't. New people joined the network, blocks were created, and new Bitcoins were minted on a predictable schedule. And this is what Bitcoin was designed for because the current system, the problem with it is not just all the leverage and debt, but the trust. Mm -hmm. Satoshi warned us that banks are trusted to hold our money, but instead they lend it out in waves of credit bubbles with just a fraction in reserve. And so people just need to remember that when they give their money to the bank, the bank is making bets with your savings. It's not sitting there. It's not backed one to one. You're essentially trusting the bank to manage counterparty risk. And what you have in return is an IOU on the screen. And the difference with Bitcoin is you have a bearer instrument with no issuer that you can self custody with no counterparty risk. And you don't have to trust anybody but yourself. The reason I love precious metals, God's money, is because you can't create it or destroy it. You can't do it. Bitcoin is similar to that from the people is you cannot make another Bitcoin. They've tried it 22,000 times with, with shit coins and you cannot destroy it. It's, it's in the ether. Now there's nothing they can do about it. They can try to make it illegal and arrest you for using it and all this other stuff, but they cannot destroy precious metals and they cannot get rid of uh, Bitcoin. This is why Bitcoin was made. And that's why it's shining right now. Uh, gold and silver are shining too. You know, the prices are going up because they're not making any more of this stuff, guys. There's only going to be 21 million uh, Bitcoin. You can't just print out physical silver and physical gold. You can't do it. You know, this is why I tell people you got to learn what's going on. You got to get your financial IQ up and your money out of the system. It's hard to teach somebody how to find a better money. It really is because all they want to do is make more of this. But when you save in this, you're getting robbed. And they're stealing from us, ladies and gentlemen. And we got to be the saviors here. We have to. Um, this is a this is a crazy moment in our in our history. And the reason why um, I'm fighting so hard is because I know that my grandkids um, one day are gonna suffer for this if if I don't do something about it now. If I don't save in this stuff here, and I just save in this, and I don't teach them what's going on, I would never, by the way, put kids in these schools nowadays. I just wouldn't. Uh, the evil empire right now is thriving, but we're 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 coming back with people like the Freedom Caucus and Lauren Boebert and Marjorie Taylor Greene and Matt Gates and Chip Roy and the like, Ron DeSantis, Donald Trump, uh, you know, the independent uh, news outlets besides CNN and, and and the lamestream media. We got people that are fighting. We got we got us, you know, the freedom fighters, the sovereignty. Uh, chasers and we got to keep on going guys you know i sleep good with this stuff here when i know i have it i have not a dime in the bank over 
what I'm willing to lose or what my bills are paid. I save in Bitcoin and I save in precious metals. And when it's time, again, I, I truly believe this is the digital money of the future. It's, it's a comparison of the Internet, what the Internet did. I think for information, as far as information goes, the Internet, what it did for information, I believe Bitcoin will do for money. I, I just believe it. Um, again, t check out Greg Foss and others and learn as much as you can about Bitcoin. Get your Bitcoin insurance if you don't like Bitcoin. It's absolutely 100% certain that the Fiat Ponzi will fail. It's just a matter of when. I like to think of Bitcoin as an insurance policy on the Fiat Ponzi. And it's like owning fire insurance on your house. You, you don't ever want your house to burn down, but let's say you see on the other side of a valley, a forest fire. Well, if the forest fire is approaching your house, you know that you're in trouble. You'd certainly want to own insurance. And you don't trade that insurance, you keep that insurance. And I like to think of Bitcoin as the same thing. It's insurance on the Fiat Ponzi. It's extremely cheap, and yet lots of people are inclined to buy and sell it. And I'm like, you don't sell your fire insurance on your house, much like you don't sell Bitcoin as your insurance policy on the Fiat Ponzi. Uh, but put a dollar or two a day away in Bitcoin. And once you get to a certain amount, get your cold storage and uh, own it yourself. Don't keep it on a... Don't keep it on an exchange. It's like keeping your cash in, in the bank and it's like keeping your gold and silver on paper or somebody else holding it for you. If you don't hold it, you don't own it. Not your keys, not your Bitcoin. All this stuff you see in front of me uh, is my insurance uh, to fight against the Fiat, Fiat Ponzi scheme and uh, to get away from this because um, it's robbing us every single day. Inflation is theft, ladies and gentlemen. And it's time for us to let everybody know, our loved ones, our, especially the ones we, we love and care about, our constituents, uh, to let them know what's really going on uh, in the money system today. All right, guys, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Um, give me your story. You know, Tell me what you got. What are you doing to fight? And it ain't, it ain't just about what you have personally. Uh, you already know what's going on. You have plenty. You know what I mean? You, you have plenty. You got to teach your loved ones what's going on, too. And you got to, put, like I said, put your hand on their shoulder and don't argue with them. Tell them they've been lied to and wake them up. All right. You guys are leaders and I know you can do it. I really uh, I really know that. So uh, thank you again so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, we got a long, tough road ahead with the evil empire, man. We do. Um, but we got to keep on going. So let me know what you guys are doing and uh, to fight this tyranny and uh Give me some ideas and give me some kind words in the, in the, in, in the box below. All right? Uh, please, guys, in the comment section below, do me a favor, guys. If you like this video, hit the like button only if you like it. If you guys like my channel and my videos, go ahead and share it. I'm trying to share my passion and my love uh, for the new digital money and God's money. Uh, we're on the same team. We're part of the Rebel Alliance. Um, I don't know if you're Luke Skywalker or... Han Solo or Chewbacca, whoever you are, um, <laughs> but we got to keep on fighting. All right. So since I'm sharing a little things with you and my passion for everything, at least you can do is share my videos because you guys already know sharing is caring. And you guys also know I love you very much. You guys are my boys. You know that. And the ladies out there. I love each and every one of you. Um, pray for this country. Uh, God bless you and your family. Pray for this country, ladies and gentlemen, because uh, we need it and we need to be back. Um, to God, you know, it's good versus evil. There's no in between, you know, and there's no, there's, there's no, oh, I'm going to ride the fence and I don't know what I'm doing. No, it's either good or evil. And, uh, I'm on the rebel side and I know what side you guys are on. I'll talk to you guys soon. I love each and every one of you so much. And, uh, let's keep on fighting.
Peace and love.